Hey everyone, and welcome to The Basement Games. It's mail day, and I wanna show you a card I got, and we're gonna do this as a uh, unboxing, if you will, or unpackaging. Um, well, here's the skinny on it. Uh, I got a unlimited Wheel of Fortune on eBay for a very great price. Uh, but anytime you get a price that's too good to be true, it's worth noting that maybe it is. So uh, what I'm gonna do is verify the card, and there's several ways that I verify cards. One, I try to bring up a, an example of a card that is the same. If I don't have one that's the same, then I try to get one that's very close. So I don't have an actual unlimited Wheel of Fortune, but I do have several revised sets. And they all are fairly close as far as their look and, and their feel. Um, major difference on the, un, uh, the revised going further as far as like closer to us versus the unlimited ones. Unlimited, beta, and alpha all say both players must discard cards and revised, uh, let's see, and the uh, judge foil say all players. So there's something to be aware of. I think the collector's edition also says all players as well. So, um, so here's kind of what I do to verify cards. First of all, anytime you buy anything on eBay or if you buy it online, I highly recommend just doing a quick video for yourself of you actually opening the product. Now, all I did was put some labels over here just to protect uh, the identities of who's involved, um, but it has not been opened. It's a complete seal. Uh, and the reason for this is if you ever need t some kind of verification that you didn't do a swap or there's no shenanigans going on, this is the best way to say, hey, look, this is exactly how I got it as is. Um, I also, once it's out of the package, I verify using the light test, which I'll show you how that works. And actually I have a couple lights on here as well. I have these little jeweler loops. They're about $10 and you can get them on Amazon pretty cheap and they're perfect for that pair purpose. And also a nice little weight scale. Um, and the reason I do this is almost every card in Magic's history weighs 0 0.06 gram or ounces. Let me, you know what, let's find out. Take this one out of the sleeve. Uh, foils are a little bit different but almost every card in Magic's history will weigh the exact same amount. And now I'm actually, here, let me, I'm gonna take it off of, oop, there we go. I'm just balancing it out right here. Okay, so we have zero, and we're gonna put this on top. It should be 0 .06, yeah, exactly, 0 .06. And that's virtually every card in Magic's history unless there's uh, a double foiling process going on, and then it might be 0 .07. So it should weigh the exact same 0 .06. So yeah, and then we're just gonna look at it, and um, if I got it for the price I got it for, then yeah, I, I feel pretty good about it. If it's a forgery, then we'll know about that too. All right, so first off, I wanna say, when you buy a card, and a Wheel of Fortune from Unlimited is over $200, I think the TCG is around 250, maybe even higher. This is not the way to package it. Um, it's nice that it's in a padded envelope, but it, as you can tell, it's a very, very thin, uh, basically, very thin, I forgot what they're called, a little plastic holder. It's not uh, protected very well. And, and I'll show you how right now as I crack it open. So there's just a little bit of bubbles. And then as I figured, just the one. Okay, so there's, I guess, the TCG price. That's not what I paid. Um, I would recommend in sending any value, anything, over, say, $30, maybe even 20 you always use at least two, maybe three of these, maybe some cardboard, because it is not that hard to bend this. It's just not. So, um, all right, so that is an unlimited wheel. Let's go ahead and take it out and see if it passes all the appropriate tests. Uh, this particular seller did have some feedback. It wasn't super high. It was around 50 or so, but it was all positive. Um, okay. So I always do the field test first, and the field test feels about right um, as far as feeling cards for cards. Now granted, they're from different sets, so that's worth being aware of. This one's slightly older and this one's slightly newer. Uh, and then there's also, when you're comparing uh, various types of play. Um, okay, so let's look at, the first test I'll do is the light test. Now it's a little hard to see a bright light in this environment, but you should be able to see something. So let's take the Wheel of Fortune that we know to be an authentic one. Uh, that, that light is too bright. Let me take that out real quick. Reduce that glare for you. Okay, so we're gonna try this now. And take this light right here, put it behind. And just what I figured, you should be able to actually read Magic the Gathering right behind it. And your card should always look like that, whether you're using a brighter light or a darker light. So here's a slightly brighter light. 
you should be able to see the blue letter behind. That's the magic, there's the big M and an A-G-I-C, Magic the Gathering that you're gonna see right there. So you should be able to see that without any problem. So let's go back to our big light here. Okay, so it should be something like this. Now I would recommend doing this in a fully dark room so that way you can fully see it, but it should be very comparable to this and I'll explain why in a second. So let's see if it passes that test. All right, so I do see the M and the rest as you can see kind of closely there. All right, so that's, that's a good indication right there because the light test is one of the best and easiest tests to prove. Um, and then let's go ahead and put this behind there as well. And that seems pretty legit right there as well. Uh, I, now, the reason why the light test works, um, a majority of the cards, in fact, maybe all of the magic cards actually have a very, very thin blue core. You may have heard of this before. It's a level in between that's actually a very light blue. If you rip a card in half, which I don't have one on me to rip, but just use a, a land if you want to check it out, you're going to see a, a dark blue blackish kind of uh, filler in between the two halves of this card as they're mashed together. I know it's kind of a weird process. Um, so it, when you use a black core, which is what a lot of the Chinese counterfeits will use, that light just does not come through nearly as well as a blue core uh, light does. So that's just worth being aware of. But let's go to the next thing. We were gonna do a test on the scale and just to compare apples to apples. So we have it at, whoop, let's see if you can see that. Zero, zero, zero. We'll put the one that we know to be authentic on there. 0 0.6, and then here's the brand new card. Back down to zero. 0 0.6, so that's two passes. Now, I will say this, I have had fakes make it through this level. Um, I recently had a fake from Portal 3 Kingdoms, which already is a hard set to understand just because it was printed in this weird way in a, in a printing area that they don't normally print. In fact, they only used it for Portal 3 Kingdoms, some of the celebration cards, as well as um, Battle Bond. If you ever touch Battle Bond cards fresh out of pack, they just feel different than any other card because they're printed at that printing press in Japan, which made Portal 3 Kingdoms. So um, that one was really hard to, to tell until I finally had some other professionals look at it. Uh, let's go ahead and now we're gonna look under the smallest loop here, which should be a 10 times multiplier, and see what we're looking for here. Um, whenever you look at cards, you're gonna see a two-step process. Basically, all the art and all the paint is done in one step, and then the lettering is done in a second step. So this lettering is gonna be a lot more clear than if they did it all as one. And some of the earlier proxies or fakes from China often printed it all as one, and these letters just came out looking very digitized and terrible. So as you look at this in the, let's see, do, 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 you'll see that this is a very clear and easy to read. It's not pixelated at all, and that's what you wanna see. And again, this is on the, the known authentic card. So now we're gonna do the same exact test on the unlimited card. And yep, that definitely has the appearance of a two-step process right there. So that's excellent. Um, another test to look at under the microscope, when you flip the card, you will see a green dot. And you'll see this on, of course you see the, 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 the wheel right there. You'll see the green dot. And if you look under it on a very high-end microscope, you will see a very, very small sliver of red pixelation in the green dot on the back. This is incredibly hard for uh, Chinese knockoffs to forge. So uh, I'll just show you again how this is done here. In fact, it's so hard to forge that actually not every single card has it. So it's hard for um, regular cards to show this as well. Do you see, if you look towards the bottom right side uh, under the black, you see the black circle, right? And then there's a shade part of the green circle and there's three or four little dots in there that look red. That's what we're talking about. It's incredibly hard to duplicate in a forgery setting. And then we'll do the same exact test here under these cards. Oops, this is the unlimited card. And, and you'll see exactly the problem I'm having with this particular test this bubble is not actually filled in all the way. In fact, the green doesn't make it all the way to the black line. Now, does that mean it's a forgery? No, not at all. It just means that this is one of those cards that didn't get printed at a microscopic level 100% the way that it should. 
but something that does give me verification that this is an authentic card. Do you see the rosette pattern? The rosette pattern is all this right here. This is incredibly hard to duplicate for any forgery system because when they print, you'll often see wavy lines. You won't see something quite so intricate. And that's just something that Wizards did and they stuck with, and it's very, very hard to duplicate that. Final test that I like to run, um, I don't do the Ben test. The Ben test does work, um, uh, at least on cheaper cards. Uh, but I will show you this. Sometimes you can just spot it. When you deal with enough cards, you're just gonna notice certain things. It's not impossible to do a fake line of play on a card like this one has right here, or down here at the bottom but it's that extra little detail. You can even smell the cards a little bit. It's that extra little detail that says this is an authentic Magic the Gathering card because it's been played either out of sleeve or maybe just got handled or just, hey, it's a 20 plus year old card, so it just has a little bit of light play. So um, I'm gonna call that an authentic card and I got a hell of a deal on it. So uh, yeah, pretty happy with that situation. Great timing, okay. That's gonna be all. The dogs apparently are the shutoff for, for this video. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, bye-bye.